Oh yes, this is where the magic's gonna happen today, baby. Oh, get it, get it, get it. Oh, ow, this is such a gorgeous park. All right, kayakers oh. for beginners. One thing, holding your keys. Let me show you this. I just have a simple snap ring, but I use the one that has a lock right here. So that once I put it out to my belt loop, lock it so that it don't come off. You can put this on your PFD, you can put this on your belt loop. All right, tactic number two. I got me a, this is like a scuba dive retractable right here. It retracts. It also has a way to clip off your rings. So you can put your keys, you can put your knives, you can put your uh, pliers. For me, I have, this is multi. I like it because I can do uh, snap rings, I can do uh, pliers, I can uh, snip lines and I can bend uh, different things. So for me, this is a multi-use. Uh, multi and because my hands are all messed up, I can actually hold this a lot easier than the little smart things. And then, for, I literally slide it right here, boom, done. My spot, boom. So you need to grab it, boom, got it. Put it back in, good to go. So that's my, my method right, right there, three. boom. This pocket right here, I keep my phone in, whichever, I don't know where it's at now. Ugh, lost it. But this one, uh, somewhere on your PFD, I try to keep my some terminal tackle. I keep some leader lines because I definitely go through that a lot when I do my reties. I keep hooks. Um, I keep weights. Uh, the simplest things that you do for like uh, Texas rig. Things for me like the simplest replacement hooks because uh, for me that's something I go through a lot is soft plastics. I play with a lot of soft plastics, so that's why I use terminal tackle. Inside here, check oh, this. Inside this pocket right here. I keep a ton of uh, emergency stuff like markers for my tournaments and stuff. You can write them on your hand, you can write them on the board. Ugh. Uh, a little lighter in case you want to toke out with the bass and the fish. Emergency knife, why? Because you gotta have something orange in order for people to find you. Just kidding. And uh, that's about it for that side. I keep my wallet inside here. Let me see if I get this lighting. I keep the wallet inside this pocket right here where I put uh, my, uh, fish license and things like that so that's it keep my radio right here clip it right in especially when i'm doing inshore fishing or uh, offshore i'll keep a radio on me right now i'm fishing a local area you can tell the lake's pretty small and uh, i'm gonna just uh, stay pretty close and that's it uh what else i got here oh my rape whistle you never know when these bass come out to try to touch you you know so stay away See, you just stay away from me cool no bass no touchy right all right Cool. Uh, I got a. This is a StoQuest PFD. Uh, that this professional, professional. Jesus, I'm freaking out of it. This uh, float, personal flotation device. I might need to slow down a little bit. So this PFD right here, it floats. It's awesome. There's a lot of awesome PFDs out there, like the NRS Chinook, which is a well-known one within the kayak community. But this one, I don't know what it is, but the form fit of it, the how buoyancy it is, this one keeps me afloat really well. Uh, and then the, the low pro in the back, uh, everything just works out dope, but this 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 one, so. It became my favorite, it has a lot of uh, uh, loops and rings and, and pockets. I can put my pocket, my hand inside my pocket here, hand in a pocket here, I don't even know what's in there. And I got all these other pockets here. I got buttons I can press when I catch fish. You know, all the cool stuff. If you haven't seen one of those things, these are awesome. Yep. All right. It's game time. So that's some things that I normally bring when I'm, uh, boom, kayak fish. Right here. This is a simple tackle box. It could be a cooler box. It could be a bait box. If you're inshore fishing, you can put some live minnows in this thing. This one I could put some live well. Inside here, I keep these little guys here. And I change them out based on what I'm fishing for. So if I'm fishing for top water, I do top water stuff. If I'm doing things with chatter baits and stuff, I do some chatter baits. If I'm doing soft plastics, I change it out, throw a bag in there. If I'm doing flipping jigs and stuff, I might throw some flipping jigs. Uh, if I like smelly, stinky, beautiful, naughty crawls and plastics, oh, I go with that. Hey, go check them out, Naughty Fish Outfitters. They got some awesome plastics. Uh, oh, if you haven't seen these sand sticks, whew, they work. Well, I think they work, I mean, that's to be an opinion. Um, so that's some stuff I normally will carry, some kind of quick tackle. I normally will be able to interchange these in and out to different fishing styles. I go inshore fishing for like redfish. I'll change those out to like uh, Z-mans and things like that. Like a good net. This one right here, you can see that little tape. I actually cut that off and I remade it smaller. So look how small this thing looks. I've had this for two and a half years. I got it at Walmart. Ugh, let me pop this thing down. Walmart clips right in, has that nice uh, anti-hook net, which is awesome, it's amazing you need those. Uh, it's really light and it's small, and it's not over 60 bucks like some of the 
high-end stuff but hey you can get either or so you can go cheap like i did i think i paid like 10 bucks for this thing again last for two and a half years but i probably should advance later maybe i don't know oh snap look yep, i found it yep got my nalgene bottle so i can save the planet that's right so always reuse these uh help save plastic from getting all in the oceans and the waters because we gotta protect our fish so get a nalgene bottle if you don't got one get one some kind of awesome bottle that you'll use over and 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 over. And over Another and over item over. you'll need a awesome, awesome fish grippers. This is the Texas Colors. Why? Because Texas is awesome. Um, and some kind of way to hook it up. You don't have to have a carabiner on it, but I do sometimes when I do my stakeout poles. Uh, but this is an awesome, awesome thing to have. You could use this as an anchor control. You could actually clip this onto trees. You can clip this onto your buddies. You know, if they're talking lips, you just grab them in the, the mouth. It's awesome. Um, use this for the crazy fish to talk back. And uh, yeah, and it's made in America. We're going to eat a catch board a nice beautiful catch board and you have to have a naughty fish sticker on the catch board or it's not approved just kidding uh and you will need a fish identifier on your board which is awesome you can either write on your board right on one of those cool things and uh but yeah you need one of those for your kayak fishing tournaments it's awesome this is a uh, carbonite board it's really really light which is what i like sometimes i like that light stuff Yep, get that. So if you kayak fish, get aboard. So for those who know me, know I normally fish my Hobie Revo, which I love. It's one of my favorite kayaks. It's probably been one of my favorite kayaks for a very, very long time. But when I'm trying to do a really short trip, like right now, I got like barely an hour left of fishing before it gets dark here in Virginia. And so I sometimes take this little skipjack. It's a nine footer, it's really light. I got messed up back, back right now. So I take this guy out just to get a quick session in sometimes. And so for those anglers who are out there spending $1,000 on your kayak, you just know you can get a simple kayak or you can get an expensive kayak. They all do the exact same thing. If you can put a fishing rod on it, you can put a little board on it so you can measure your fish. If you can hold your drinks on that kayak, hey, <laughs> you're rolling, right? Um, so this one right here, this kayak, just the other day, I was able to catch uh, 20 and a 20 and a quarter uh, just here in Virginia. So any kayak works and my hobie i love it i can get out really really far really really fast this one i am not taking the chesapeake bay bridge but if it's a calm day or a nice windy day but i'm able to hit the anchor off somewhere nearby i'm building so but yes for those looking for kayaks this right here i think it's like 600 500 bucks or something skipjack i mean it's really small really easy if you got a kid dope kayak and it's simple it's like it's i can still stand in that thing actually it's more stable than my revo revo is uh i love it it's fast but there's a reason why it's fast it's narrow Yep, skipjack, vibe. If y'all like vibe, there it is. Boom. Quick little look before I launch. This is what it looks like. You definitely, I got a net, something you need for kayak fishing. Stakeout pole for the crazy winds, crazy currents. I love that thing. Park off by a bank and cast out, it's awesome. My uh, catch board is approved for KBS tournament fishing. I love it. Really lightweight, durable, and it, <laughs> that thing doesn't break. Then I got a fish identifier. I put my IDs on that bad boy right there so I can, from my tournaments. Take a picture of your fish with that in the picture and you upload it to the apps, it's awesome. That right there was given to me by a good friend, our juggernaut, AKA Carmen. Uh, and let me tell you, this thing holds a ton of stuff. I put, uh, I got one inside my uh, my Revo in the hatch and uh, I put all my my uh, lures I go through in one day. I could have like six different freaking jigs and lures. It's wild. Um, I normally bring about two rods minimum, um, ideally. And normally I do one with soft plastics or finesse rigging and I do one more of a medium style. Things like spinners, chatter baits, heavier stuff. Um, so I'm more of a medium style. This is more of a heavier rod over here, medium style rod. You can see by how thicker that one is and how thin this one is. This is more of my finesse, lightweight. This is a light, fast action rod. Um, both of them are always around because my kayaks are normally about 12, 13 feet. So my rods are normally between 7, 1, 7, 2 um, length. Um, I try not to go short unless I'm going to heavy fishing. Like if I'm doing cobia, then these rods might stay about 60 meters. Um, the reels, I'm a Shimano guy. I'm a spin. I like things that... Uh, it's just it's always been my style. Uh, I do like bait casters, but for me, I just always personally always get uh, spin wheel. But I also do. Uh, let me show you all real quick. I always do a lot of swivels. Um, really, I do swivels uh, for some reason. All the spinning and everything that like keeps your line uh, integrity better. And so I always do a, a leader line at the end. I do braid to leader. Um, and then I like to do uni knots, um, Diego knots. Those are some of my favorite knots to use. Uh, and if I do tournament fishing, I don't use these during tournaments. Uh, during a tournament, I'll remove this. I don't know it's effing good. So that FG knot is smooth. It glides through your eyes because your eyelids up here, if you end up having a, a lot of people put a bead so that you don't break the little eyelid right there. Um, so for me, this thing here, I'm always careful about how close I reel my, this, this up to my eyelid. 
If you're new to fishing, I highly recommend you put a bead right here so you don't damage your eyelids. And definitely do not hook your, well you can see here, I hook up my hooks to the guides uh, out here in the post, not in the eyelets. Do not put them in this ring. That's little graphite or different type of rings in there. They're glued in or they're, they're, they're manufactured in. They can break, they can crack. You don't want cracks in these things because you're lying. So some things are Okay, yep, we're about to do some kayak fishing. We got those base, bare basics, bare basics. is all I need right here just to get out and do some good fishing. Now, let's go catch some massive dome. Game time. This direction, and I'm gonna find a place to anchor on. A lot of water here. Love it. Like Gorgeous. It. It's out in the water. It floats. It's awesome. It has a nice grip, so I can squeeze, grip, grip that. In. You can put different devices into here. You can use this to dig into the ground. You can use this to actually shovel off on the ground as well. And it's very, very durable. And I can stick it in the ground and attach my grippers to it and different things to it. And Take it home. You can actually use it as a personal pole, or even better, selfie stick. I'll show you. For those that don't know, um, Naughty Fish does sell custom plastics like this. This is one of our Naughty Frogs. It's one of my one of my favorites. Uh, all last year, the June bug color was on fire for me. And uh, this month for April, the spawn and the spring, this red uh, and June bug. So the blue flake sand is a June bug color. It's not black. a two to three inch or two to three feet um, fluoro leader to a swivel and a braided line. The um, fluoro is about like 12 pounds and in the uh, braided line is 20 pounds. The reason I do 20 pounds is braid is because I also switch back and forth between salt water and fresh water. Sometimes it braids 30 pounds. Ooh, ooh, y'all saw that? Right over there on that uh, far log with some activity, which is a good thing. A lot of times, you might think it's a fish and it's turtles dropping, but that one was a pop, which is a good sign. So what I'm doing is I'm throwing finesse rig. I'm going really, really slow. Um, I'm stopping every once in a while to let the bait fall and just be natural for a bit because these big fish are so pressured, they... Uh, they don't normally hit the same activity. They don't normally, like you gotta really, really play it. And then you really want your stuff weedless. If you're playing the weeds, you see how my hook kind of came out? I want my hook to be inside this plastic so I don't keep fighting the weeds. <clears throat> so. And right now I'm trying to aim for certain pockets and, come on. And, and I have an ultra light or light fast action rod. And I, I like it even in the weeds. A lot of guys don't do that. They want the heavier medium, uh, medium to heavy uh, style rods only because you can pull through the weeds easier, especially if you're doing spinners and chatters and stuff like that. But for me, I love the feel. I love how sensitive it gets. So for me, it's a light, fast action. You know, between a 7.2, 7.3, those type of rods. Shimano is one of my favorites. Um, this SI4 is just, to me, one of the lightest, coolest little rod reels that they got. Man, that's a little fighter. Oh my god. Uh Naughty Frog, Texas rig. Mm. There it is. Gorgeous. There she is. Gorgeous, gorgeous fish. Naughty frog right there. Texas rig. Slow in the bottom. There he is. Number two. He got my phone all wet, my clothes all wet. He and he came in with a bunch of grass. He was in the grass. 
asking what do you do about having to fight through grass <laughs> you bear with it you just gotta yep head home it's tired it's dark i only have about an hour and a half of fishing um hopefully y'all saw some stuff that y'all might need when you're kayak fishing uh, i talked about the fish grippers which is something i always bring with me if i can um you never know what you can use those for from again anchoring catch using it for the fish um you name it again if your buddy talks a lot of stuff you can just use it to grab his lips um the stakeout pole, park pole, or the anchor pole, whatever you want to call it. The thing that floats, I like it because it floats. Some don't. Um, either or, it will help you in strong wind, strong current. It'll help you stay in certain areas. If you're trying to get those bass and you don't want to creep, you want to creep up on them, you anchor yourself off, you cast really, really far, and it could be a really good tool. Um, if you haven't seen Chad Hoover, he talks about it. He talks, uh, uh, Gene Jensen talks about it, how you creep up on the fish and things like that. Um, I use that technique all the time, especially during pre-spawn. You, you got to be, <laughs> this is a finesse game. Uh, even though uh, those big babies, bass mamas are on those beds, you uh, you got to finesse them. Yeah, put some of that naughty juice. Mm. Uh, today, my red was worked pretty good. I got a bunch of hits, but I also got two on the uh, two little bass, little dinky dinks. Did not get the sizes I needed. I was going for some 19 pluses, maybe some 20 inches, but uh, hey, don't we all want that? And uh, didn't get it, so until mm. on next time. I don't have fishing, two fish, I'm okay with that. It's better than skunky skunk. Skunks, man, that's a horrible feeling. It makes any angler feel like poop. And if you go on for more than one day of skunks, uh, then you feel like a pooty poop. So, uh, so yeah, fish grips is a plus for me. Park pole is a plus for me. PFD is always 100% a plus for me. A paddle, of course, gonna have a paddle. And if you have a pedal kayak, you still want a paddle. You never know if the pedal breaks on you, trust me. I went two years, awesome kayak, uh, and my pedal broke on me when I was trying to show off and race another dude, and I beat him. But uh, I embarrassed myself that it broke, so yeah. Uh, but paddles always, you never know when you need it. Uh, the other thing is, oh, unless you wanna, yeah, we don't wanna talk about that. So paddle, PFD, PFD's a must. I keep terminal tack on my PFD. You also saw I keep those little retractable uh, pliers with cutters on them. You want something on your body that can cut the line. You never know when you fall in the water. You never know when you get tangled up with your buddy who your buddy might be trolling, which is a booger sometimes because I've had some booger buddies. And my booger buddies will go by with trolling and they will hook me. Um, just the other day, I had an awesome booger buddy hook me and a couple times actually in one trip, which was awesome because I felt loved. I was like, oh man, they really want to hook me today. And so, uh, but luckily it wasn't nothing major. I was able to undo it. But you never know if you need those scissors, the clippers, or those line cutters, you name it. Uh, if you haven't seen those line cutters, I don't have a pair on me. Uh, maybe they want to sponsor me one day. Just kidding. Uh, but anyways, those look awesome. Uh, for me though, my hands are really uh, sensitive. I got a lot of damage from parachuting and stuff, uh, which one do y'all know? So, I, uh, I like the something with the thicker handle. It's kind of my thing. Yeah, uh, what else we talk about? Uh, I was talking about the tackle. So terminal tackle, sometimes I don't even go out with a tackle box at all. I just go with my PFD with just enough stuff for my soft plastic for Texas rig, Alabama rig, or Carolina rig, something like that. And uh, I say Alabama rig, I don't ever bring an Alabama rig. Uh, even though it's dope, voters probably have more fun with that. For me, trolling with Alabama rig or throwing those um, isn't my thing for kayak fishing, but they're awesome. But again, you think some Texas rig, Car uh, uh, Carolina rig, those two are kind of like, mostly used by me i use them a lot uh, but i also throw everything else but uh if i'm gonna go kind of a quick trip maybe a 30 minute uh an hour trip uh, maybe after work i got like an hour before sun goes down then i will throw or bring just my pfd with some terminal tackle um let's see what else oh rape whistle always keep a rape whistle you never know when you got to use that thing uh keep it attached to your pfd and always know where it's at even with your eyes are closed even if you can't see because you never know when you need it um, a radio, I don't bring it with me on my lakes a lot, but if I do like uh, big trips, ocean trips, cobia trips, because uh, y'all saw all those monster cobias I caught, I'm just lying, I never caught one. If somebody wants to take me out and catch some cobia, I'm down, let's do it. I will uh, rub your feet and buy you beer. Uh, besides that, let's see, whistle, PFD, grippers, stakeout pole, your paddle, your kayak. And again, kayaks, they're all types. So whatever gets you on the water, whatever makes you happy, that the kayak is going to work. Um, did I use a simple nine footer? Those are an economical one, like four or 500 bucks, something like that. Uh, it's a Vive Skipjack. <clears throat> I got the Hobie Revo, my favorites, fast, it's light. 
but uh, you gotta bring pedals out and all the other stuff. So sometimes I just go with the quick, hey, with whatever can get me in the water. Uh, what else did I talk about? Uh, hmm, I think those are my main things I bring, I can think of. So, yeah. All right, I'm out, douches.